Nothing wrong with loving who you are, he said, cause you made you perfect, babe. So, so hold your head up, girl, and you'll go far. Listen to me when I say, I'm beautiful in my way, cause I make no mistakes. I'm on the right track, baby, I was born this way. Don't add yourself in regret, just love yourself and you said, I'm on the right track. A queen, don't be a drag, just be a queen, don't be a track, just be a queen, don't be, don't be, don't be. Give yourself prudence and love your friends, so we could rejoice your truth. And the religion of the insecure, I must be myself, respect my you. A different lover is not a sin, for the way child. Actors. Anyway, <laughs> Carter, I just said bless you. What does that mean? See, why would you say bless you to someone who sneezed? In the Bible, there are several stories about blessings. And during Easter, we learned all about forgiveness and what grace means. But today, we're going to learn what blessings 
are and where they are in the Bible. What do you think about that? Pretty cool, huh? Do we need better actors? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so disappointed. But it's okay. I'm giving you grace. <laughs> giving you some grace. And let's go to room 216 and let's learn about what blessings are today. What do you think about that? All right. Yes. Woohoo! All right. Let's go. Leanne, welcome to the garden, everybody. I'm Doran. I'm the music director here. Uh, Carolyn is out of town today, so I'm going to be doing the announcements for y'all. Um, today, we welcome Patrick's Carmen. Do remind me your last name? Doherty. Thank you. Just want to get it right. She is from the D Kaleidoscope Community, Inc., um, and is going to, you know, give us a little message today. Speaking of the Kaleidoscope, that is our second quarter big give um, this, uh, this season here. And uh, represent representatives of the service, they're here today. Uh, our little give is the program Self Made, which is um, going to be putting together boxes uh, for trans of trans-affirming items. Um, after the service, there's going to be a presentation downstairs if you'd like to learn more about it. Um, also, there's a link here in the program t uh, for the Amazon wish list, um, the tiny URL link there. Um, so give that a look. Uh, also, if you haven't seen in the gallery outside, Gene Hoskin has their art uh, put up um, with the exhibit, What Color is Divine Art, uh, is out there. We talked about it a little bit last week. Take a look at it if you haven't looked at it. Um, tomorrow, April 15th, uh, there is, we're doing Visit a Mosque and Learn About Islam here. Um, basically, you can go to what is it, St. Luke's Interfaith Relationships Ministry is sponsoring this visit to a mosque. And Iman Sahir will explain the basis of Islamic faith and provide a tour of the Nur Allah Islamic Center. Um, looks like tomorrow at 6.30 to 7.30. So uh, you can register online, stlukesumc.com there. There's the link in the program. Um, also, we're going to be talking a little bit about Islam, not next week, but the following week. So um, it's kind of on, on brand there. April 27th, last thing here, Peace Walk, Stand Against Gun Violence. That's going to be April 27th, 2 to two to 3.30 um, on Martin Luther King Jr. Drive there. Um, basically, the Mayor's Youth Leadership Council is putting together a walk um, to stand against gun violence that we all know is uh, alive and well here, unfortunately. Um, you can register uh, with the link in the program here, forms.everytown.org, um, and definitely want to go and support that, so... Thank you. I'm going to go uh, pass it off to Betty here, who is a lot better spoken than myself. And we love her for that. We love her for that. Come on up. So we're very happy to uh, welcome our Kaleidoscope community to be with us this morning. And you may look around and see some people from that community. And if you do, be sure to welcome them and say hello and give them your name and uh, make sure that they feel as welcome here as you can possibly make them. Um, so now we go into the time of, ser of our service when we center and uh, listen and be quiet.
Good morning. Please join me in prayer. Creator of life and love, on this day, let us commit to living lives of compassion and care for all, recognizing the strength and vulnerability, the courage and authenticity, and the beauty that resides within us all. Let us strive for healing, unity, and understanding so that every person will know that they are loved and valued. May our actions be the seeds of compassion that transform into a garden of diverse blooms. The ministry of the garden is only made possible through your gifts, through your generosity we share in big and little gifts, have meaningful services and have a facility to share in community. If you have the ability to give, we thank you for your generosity. If you can't give, know that your presence in this community and giving heart make the garden grow.
give that all an amen. 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 For those of you who don't know me um, or missed the introduction, my name is Pastrix Carmen. I am a pastor in the United Methodist Church, but I have recently been appointed the executive director of Kaleidoscope, Inc., and that is the newest extension ministry in the Indiana Conference of the United Methodist Church. So that is pretty amazing. <laughs> there is progress being made. <laughs> I know it's slow, <laughs> but I take this as a huge win for everyone everywhere because this gives us the opportunity to start setting the stage, start showing how to lead and how to serve and include everyone and to appreciate the diversity of every person that is here. So I am going to begin, or I was told I was going to begin by reading the gospel lesson, which today is from the book of Luke. Nope. That's not it. I know I bookmarked it. Oh, here it is. I bookmarked it. With, I shared an office with one of my best friends, and she stuck sticky notes all over the place that said butts. And, and when I moved out of my office, I pulled them all off of all the different places, and I stuck them in my Bible because that's the best place to put butts, right? Okay. <laughs> but, God. Okay. So. This is Luke 24, verses 36b through 48. While they were talking about this, Jesus himself stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. They were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. He said to them, Why are you frightened and why do doubts arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet. See that it is I myself. Touch me and see, for a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you see that I have. And when he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While in their joy they were disbelieving and still wondering, he said to them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it in their presence. Then he said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets, and the Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures, and he said to them, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. And that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. This is the gospel of the risen Christ. Thanks be to God if you do that kind of thing. Sorry. It's just habit, you know habit in my church to, to do that. And so I was like, oh, did they say anything? Yeah. We'll see. We'll find out. <laughs> now I know. <clears throat> so would you, would you take just, I'm, I'm going to move my Bible out of the way. <laughs> that sounded bad. <laughs> um, but would you take a moment and pray with me today? Creator God of all the heavens and of the earth, we thank you. Mother God, we thank you for your presence here with us today. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that fills us and that is present with us here in this room today. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be not my words, but your God's, but your words, God, because you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So, Jesus spent about three years with the disciples, right? Give or take a little bit if you believe what's written in the Gospels. Yet they didn't recognize him when he greeted them with that familiar greeting, peace be with you. They did not know him when they saw him or really even after he reintroduced himself, 
many were still doubtful. So what do we know about Jesus? This is audience participation points. So if I had candy, I'd throw it at you to give you an incentive. Um, but what are some things? Just throw out, name out, yell out some things. What are some things that we know about Jesus? Carpenter, Savior. Good, good. What, more, what else? I was not able to break those words up. Son of God. Son of God. Thank you. Was there someone else back there? Compassionate. Compassionate. Thank you. My ears are not working today, obviously. Worker of miracles. Worker of miracles. Yes. Human hybrid. You're getting, you, you know where I'm going today, don't you? You, you know... <laughs> You've been there, done that. All right. Well, one of the things that makes this story in particular so perplexing to me is that the disciples didn't know or recognize Christ or the resurrected Christ because the disciples knew Jesus was the Messiah. They had confessed it, that he was both God and human. Isn't, isn't this the kind of behavior that they would expect to come from Jesus right now, that Jesus would come around and surprise them? I would think so, but I digress, and I'm getting off the point. So let me get back to the point. Jesus was fully human and fully God at the same time, right? We said that here, right? Human hybrid. Jesus was fully human and fully God at the same time. He was fully human on the outside, and he was subject to the limitations that come from having a mortal human body. For example, he experienced hunger when he was in the wilderness. He thirsted when he was at the well in Samaria. He suffered from fatigue. He suffered from emotions such as sorrow when Lazarus died. Anxiety and fear when he prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane. He was also subject to injury when he was beaten on the road to the cross. And then finally also unto death. These are all things that Jesus was subject to because he was human. He was human on the outside but fully divine on the inside. And evidence of this includes the fact that, one, he claimed divinity. He claimed divine authority. Two, he performed miracles, right? We already heard that. He performed miracles. He forgave sins. He was our Savior would be another way to say that. And in John chapter 10, verse 30, he says, I and the Father are one. More evidence of Jesus' divinity, that Jesus was God and that God was Jesus. So therefore, <clears throat> we conclude that Jesus' outsides didn't match his insides. His outsides didn't match his insides. And that is often the way we describe someone who's transgender. That the way that they think and they feel on the inside doesn't match the physical body that they've been given on the outside. And so I want to participate in just a little bit of Midrash this morning. I don't know if you know what Midrash is. It's an ancient Jewish custom of retelling stories and scriptures and things in a modern-day context so that the audience can understand. So I'm going to give you a Midrash, my version of a Midrash, of today's scripture. So that means you're going to have to take your holy imagination that God gave you and put on your holy imagination cap and take a little 
trip with me. Imagine yourself sitting inside what looks like a regular doctor's office waiting room, okay? But this waiting room happens to be at a gender clinic. And there's a young man who walks in and takes a seat. And as he sits down, he looks around the room and suddenly he sees two women in the waiting room that he recognizes. He recognizes them from school. And so he gets up immediately and he goes over and he says, well, hello, old friends. I hope you're doing well. And the two women looked at each other and they looked at him and they had this look of confusion on their faces. Then Josh said, it's me, Jane. Oh, well, wait a minute. It's not Jane anymore. It's Josh from high school, remember? Look, I still have the scar on my leg from the time that we were out at that party and I got cut with the glass on the beer bottle. Look, I have other scars too. This scar on my chest is from my mastectomy. This scar, this healing skin is from the skin graft that gave me my new penis. He showed them all of his scars and their look of confusion changed. Suddenly they were no longer confused, but they were amazed. And they finally recognized their old friend. Josh told them how he'd never quite felt like a girl, but he thought because he was a lesbian in high school that that was just kind of the way all lesbians felt. It wasn't until he got to college and started talking to people and talking about gender that he began to realize that he wasn't a girl who liked other girls. He was a he. He was a straight trans man. He was at the clinic that day for the follow-up appointment from his final procedure three days ago. And he gushed to his old friends how he was finally happy, finally comfortable in his body, and that he had found a community that supported him and believed in him and loved him unconditionally. Once Josh finished his story, one of the women spoke up and told Josh how much she admired him and loved hearing how happy he was, how much of a comfort that was and how reassuring that was. But then she said, I think I need to reduce myself to you, though. She said, my name is Kai, and I just started my first round of hormone therapy. I am a trans man and I use he, him pronouns. Josh embraced Kai warmly and told him how proud he was of Kai for taking the steps to be his authentic self. I love this for you, Kai, and if you need me, I will always be here for you. The end. You see, just as the story about how Jesus' insides didn't match his outsides, it's the same with the trans and the non-binary community. It's the same with Josh and Kai that we heard about in the Midrash. It wasn't until he had completed his transition goals that he finally felt like he was living as his authentic self. Viewed through the lived experience of a trans person, Jesus is trans. And it is in Jesus' death and resurrection that his transness is revealed. You see, after the resurrection, Jesus was transformed. Jesus was transfigured into the person or the form that he was 
created to be in. No longer did he have the physical constraints that he did before. He could still fix breakfast. He could still eat with the disciples on the beach. But he could also alter his appearance. So he was not recognized by the women at the tomb, by the disciples on the road to Emmaus, and even the disciples in today's scripture. He could defy the law of physics by walking through walls and doors that were locked, like the upper room. Trans people can identify with Jesus through his cru crucifixion. They experience taunts and slurs like Jesus did. They experience physical and mental abuse by loved ones and strangers. They carry these scars with them in addition to their scars for transition. Trans people can relate to Jesus' death because of how many that we remember every year at the Trans Day of Remembrance in November. Like Jesus, they didn't break any laws. They were just trying to be themselves. Trans people can identify with Jesus' resurrection as they say goodbye to the old them and introduce their new and authentic self to the world. I had another note I wanted to make there, but it's good. Trans people die to their old self and embrace their new self. And out of that death comes resurrection, new life, and authenticity. But before we get to that new life, we have three days that are spent in the grave, right? Jesus spent three days in the grave. And in that tomb, it was dark. And for trans people, they spend time in that darkness. In that darkness where it's a time of discernment. It can be a time of hurt. It can be a time of discernment and trying to figure out what is going on in their head and in their body and in their minds and in their hearts. And then, just as Jesus entered the world, exited the tomb, a new and transfigured Messiah, the Christ, so does the transgender person emerge when they come out and reintroduce themselves to the world as their authentic self. You see, Jesus is trans. And so Jesus identifies with the pain and suffering of the trans and non-binary community. No one understands what it feels like to be trans better than Jesus. We as individuals or the church can choose to condemn and torture the trans and non-binary community because we don't understand them, because they're different, and we think that what they're doing is unnatural, or a hundred other reasons. But the bottom line is they have the same type of lived experiences as Christ. And I believe that anyone who has lived through the parallel experiences of Christ's life also has a special connection to him. Because they can empathize with each other and develop an intimate relationship based on love and based on these shared experiences. And who are we, the church or as individuals, to be someone else's stumbling block when they are looking for the unconditional love and acceptance that only God can give? We can stand in judgment like the people did when the woman was caught in adultery. Don't get me started on where the man was. We can judge like the people, but then Jesus enters the picture and suddenly judgment is gone. Judgment does not 
condemn the woman. Jesus does not condemn the woman. So we can make a choice to stand in judgment or we can stand in love like Jesus did and we can stand up for the trans and non-binary community as Jesus stood up for this Samaritan woman. We can do this, but this is something that we have to choose to do. And if you follow the news, this is, this is just a side note, and you've been following any of the trans legislation that they've been trying to pass, if you haven't been following it, please go check it out. Because right now, the trans community needs allies, allies like you, that are sitting in these chairs to stand up, to raise your voices, to let the government know, to say, these are beloved children of God. Stop discriminating against them. Stop torturing them. Because when all of the men were dying of AIDS in the 80s, there was a poster that came out with the pink triangle that said silence is death. That is what is happening in the trans community right now. Our silence as allies is contributing to death in the trans community. I hope you hear that and feel convicted by that because we all need to stand up for love, for all love of all people, of all genders and sexualities. We need to do that as the church because that shows the radical love of God. Amen. stranger to the dark hide away they say cause we don't want your broken parts learn to be ashamed of all my scars run away they say no one will love you as you are won't let them break me down to dust I know that there's a place for me for we are glorious when the sharpest words want to cut me down i'm gonna send the flood gonna drown them out i am brave i am bruised i am who i'm meant to be this is me look out because here i come and I'm marching on to the beat I drum. I'm not scared to be seen. I make no apologies. This is me. Oh, 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 my skin go far away cause today I won't let the shame sink in we are bursting through the barricades and reaching for the sun
the songs they chose were just spot on perfect you sounded amazing amazing and so I want to thank you so very much for all of that I also want to remind you real quick before I give the benediction that you are all invited to come downstairs after the service where I will be doing a short presentation on Kaleidoscope and Self Made and letting you know the work that we are doing in the LGBTQ community um, with some specialized interest in the trans and non-binary community. Um, so if you would like to see where your big give and little give money is going, join me downstairs after the service. So having said that, Let me send you on your way with a blessing. The blessing of God be with you. The love of Christ fill you. And the power of the Holy Spirit sustain you as we do our part to restore, to share, and to serve our community and invite others into community with us. Amen. Oh